Let's say that you're an effects artist at a studio and you need to do something to the scene. How would you do that? And more importantly, how would you create a sublayer which represents everything that you just did? Well, here we have a sublayer, and this represents our layout departments. For this, I just loaded the sublayer file, which you can find right here. Now, the idea is that we are going to take these jars in the back, the ones without the plants in them. We're going to move them around, so we're not doing any RBD sims or things like that. We're just going to move these pots around, and then we're going to create an effects layer, which represents the effect of moving these points around. Start off by creating a prune. Go like that. And then for this primitive pattern, let's say the shelf contents. So we'll go like that, forward slash star. Well, actually let's just say contents like that. Now if we say prune unselected, we just have the jars. Let's create another prune, and this time we're going to say take the contents, forward slash, prototypes, stuff, and then I'll just say herb star. That means get rid of any jar that begins with the phrase herb. Now that we've done this, I'm going to create a layer break. And again, a layer break will eventually tell our USD file to not save anything that exists above the layer break. So think of this as a way of saying, okay, we are ready to record the actions that we're about to do for the effects component. So now that we have that, let's create an extract instances node. And one interesting thing you'll notice, and the reason why I'm using this, is that in order to modify these USD prims, we need to have them as items that we can find in this scene graph tree. And right now, if we go to contents, prototypes, you know, stuff, and we look at all this, we actually don't have instances anywhere listed within this scene graph tree. But we could see them in our viewports. So they're there, you just won't find them as USD primitives in here. So this extract instances, its job is to basically take the instances and turn them into objects that we can see in the scene graph tree. So let's start off by specifying the instances. We can find this in the contents. The primitive path is asking you, okay, we want to extract these instances, so where are we going to extract them to? Let's place this in the shelves right there and make a new section here called RBD. Now what you'll notice is that right away we don't have anything showing up because whenever you're working with instances, the syntax changes for loading in the instances. So you can't just have a path like this now you have to have square brackets. I know, it's something that you would have never thought. <laughs> square brackets, star, and now this will tell the extract instances node to actually extract them. And as you can see, we now have this RBD group right here, which contains every single instance right here. Now, you'll also notice something interesting about this instance. And that is, it grabbed all the jars that have herbs in them. So, they're there, their visibility is just turned off. So keep that in mind, because that's about to be important. But now that we have these primitives here, we now need to modify their position. And to do that, we can use something called a SOP modify. SOP modify will allow us to take all of this information, all of these USD prims, and modify them within a SOP context. So, now that we're in here, as you can see, this isn't exactly what you would expect. That is because on this SOP modify, we need to specify what we are trying to modify. In this case, everything under RBD will be the primitive. So there we go. There's our primitives, 
And now if I do spacebar F, it'll take a minute to think about it, but we have some jars. And you'll notice that it brought along the jars with the herbs inside them. That's because, again, when we extracted these instances, it brought everything along. Now, how do we fix that? Because we don't want these herb jars in there, right? We don't want to affect that. Well, remember how I said earlier that there is no difference between the activation and the visibility? Well, that's not true. This is the main difference. If I go up to the prune and I say, instead of this method of make invisible, I say deactivate, that again affects this yellow power icon over here. Now, if I go to the SOT modify, as you can see, we no longer have those herb jars showing up. And that's a good thing. So just keep that in mind in the future as you go along. But now that we have this, if I have the point on, and I do, you'll notice that we have one point down here, and that represents all of these jars. So the actual primitive that this SOP is working on represents all the jars, and it's located, well, it's associated with this one point. So I'm going to diverge a little bit from the online tutorial that you see in the docs, by creating a extract, or not, not an extract, a unpack USD. So unpack USD right there. We need to unpack this, and by doing that, now we have a point for every single jar. Let's now create a point jitter. This will be our effect. And as you can see, we now are jittering everything like so. Let's take the scale to about 0.1. Let's take our seed and say $FF, like that. And let's continue this in the next video.